Hi, welcome back for our lesson two in benchmark one. So in the last lesson, you got to take a close look at Alfred Wegener's three pieces of evidence. And you might be thinking to yourself, you know, that looked like pretty good evidence. Um, he had evidence of landforms lining up. They found fossils of creatures across all the continents that uh, they could not have possibly swam across an ocean. And evidence of fossils that climates were very, very different in some continents. For instance, they found warm weather or tropical plants fossilized in soil layers way beneath uh, layers of ice in the Arctic. So you have to ask yourself, which is more logical, that the Arctic was once very warm or that the landmass that's now in the Arctic has moved? And the logical assumption that Wagner made was that it moved. However, he still didn't have the evidence that would explain the force driving the continent's movement. So today, you're going to actually get a chance to put together a puzzle of the continents as Wagner imagined it. You're basically going to be building Pangaea today. So this is a really fun activity. Um, my suggestion for you is that if you're able, do the printed version of this activity. If not, I'm going to show you an online resource, and then everyone will be answering the same journal questions, whether or not you do that on paper, and Echo is up to you. So when we um, looked at the book pages in the last lesson, there was a diagram on page 30. And if you want, you can get that out right now. But I want to make sure that you understand um, what Alfred Wegener was thinking about before you do this puzzle. One of the fossils that he found was Glossopterus. This is a plant that was found in rock layers and fossil form all over the place. And these seeds could not have been carried by the wind or the water over the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific for that reason. And so you'll see the word Glossopterus and some of the fossils that were found on these continents could not have gone those great distances or across oceans. And so the logical explanation is that those continents were once one landmass and that the plants could be spread freely. Another piece of evidence, and you might want to look more carefully at the diagram, is about how mountain ranges are formed and how these mountain ranges seem as if they are from one continent to the next. So you can find landforms that line up in Great Britain all the way over into Americas. Okay, it's not like you can have the exact same rock layers form simultaneously an ocean apart. They were formed at the same time. And then um, glacial deposits were also found near the equator. There's no way there would ever be a glacier at the equator, way too hot. So we have some continent land masses that are now at the equator that used to be in climates that supported glaciers. Okay, so he had great evidence. Remember, people didn't believe him because he didn't know what could possibly be moving continents. All right, so this is the color cut and paste. I'm going to show you the activity to print. And then I'm going to show you an online version, which is not nearly as good, but it'll work. So you have um, linked in the Echo activity, this handout. It's called the Continental Drift Activity Packet. And these are actually the five questions that I put in the journal in Echo today to summarize our learning about the Continental Drift. So what you'll need to do is you need to print off page two and you need to color code these pieces of evidence. What you're gonna do is you're gonna try to put the continents together into Pangaea so that the evidence that you colored lines up, okay? Now, this is kind of tricky. Um, I suggest you start with a map so you can see where the continents start out as and then slide them around. So if you like coloring and cutting and pasting, this is the activity for you. We will not do this page um, together this year. So this is the Continental Drift Activity Packet. Now also linked for you in today's agenda is a link to this gizmo. Now this is an online version 
very, very similar to the cut and paste. The only drawback is that you only get to play with this for five minutes unless you sign up for a free account per day. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. You have to make sure that you have Flash Player enabled and installed. And then you can choose the evidence. So this is the fossil evidence. So we got Glossopteris. We've got a couple of these reptiles. So it looks like a mammal. And you can um, drag the continents however you want. Okay, and I haven't played with this a whole lot to see. You can reset it at any time. You can use other pieces of evidence to see um, where glaciers were, the directions of the glaciers, rock formations. You can see like these formations. Oh, there, that's how you turn it. I was wondering if you could rotate it. And you can just play with that. You get five minutes, but it's better than nothing. You can search around the web. I found a few other games that were similar in building Pangea, but um, they didn't mimic the worksheet that I had as closely as this. So let's say you have it all where you want it to be. You take a screenshot and you can turn it in if you want. Um, the only thing that you're required to do in Echo is the five question journal. So let's take a look at that. Okay, we're in benchmark one. You're going to go to the Continental Puzzle Journal. And once you've done your puzzle, you're gonna answer these questions. There's the link to the handout. You can print it, you can go to the gizmo, they're all there. Um, in addition to answering these questions, if you want to upload a picture of your cut and paste or a screenshot of your gizmo game, you're more than welcome to, but this is the only part that I'm grading. Um, it's something just a little bit different and fun to do. And we will meet again during our Zoom meeting this week. And we'll start Benchmark 2 next week. See you then.